CCTV Camera World is proud to provide support for products purchased from our website. If you purchased your product from another vendor, please contact the vendor you purchased from for further assistance. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can access a premium series IP camera from CCTV Camera World directly over your local network to enable or modify audio settings in the camera's web interface. So in order to do that, I need to open a web browser or I can use the config tool software which is located in a how to find your IP camera on the network guide on our website to find the camera in my network. So here you see I have a bunch of cameras on my network and I'm really just concerned about 192.168.1.45. However, if you're using the config tool and you can't find your camera, you may need to go up to the search setting at the top, click search setting and enter in the IP address segment or scheme for your network or the network that you know the camera might be on. To do that, you would just click in these octets and change the IP address scheme, making sure that it starts at 1 and ends at 255, and it'll search whatever network scheme that you enter. I know that I'm on a standard 192.168.1 network, as reflected by my cameras that have the same IP address. So I could sort by IP, and then find the camera that I'm interested in. So 192.168.1.45, and then I could click on the web button. and it will point my web browser instantly to that IP address for my camera. Alternatively, if I already know the IP address for my camera, I can just open up the web browser. You may have to open up yours using an icon on your desktop. And then I could type that IP address in. So 192.168.1.45 and then hit enter on my keyboard. This brings me to the same web interface for that IP address. So again, you could use the config tool or type the IP address manually into your web browser. After you enter it in, you're going to be greeted with the login screen where you'll need to use the username and password that's found on a label on the top of your camera's box. Or you can also consult with the green pamphlet that should have been included with your camera. After entering the password in, you can either hit enter on your keyboard or click the login button. After clicking the login button or hitting enter on your keyboard, it should log into your camera and you'll be in within a few moments. And depending on your camera model, you may be greeted with a message to install a plugin if it's an older camera, or most newer cameras are even able to pull in video on any modern web browser using the HTML interface. So here I have the video from my camera, but I need to enable audio setting. So in order to do that, I need to go to the setting tab by clicking on setting. And then under camera, this will be the menu that's open first. It'll take you to the conditions page. However, to get to the audio settings, you do need to click on audio. If you're in any of these other tabs, you would first need to click on camera and then click on audio. In this camera, I already have audio enabled, but you may come to this page and have audio disabled. For example, if I click the default button, it will take me back to the default settings. And now, if I were to refresh these settings after saving them, audio will be disabled. So to enable it, I need to make sure that I check the enable box for mainstream and I'm going to check the enable box for substream. This means I'll have audio on both my main and substream if I'm recording or if I'm looking at my camera while remote viewing at the substream and switch it to HD mode into the mainstream. So make sure that you've enabled it for both stream types. Next, you're going to want to choose the encode mode. This camera happens to support most, if not all, of the encode modes that our cameras support. However, the one that has the best performance, as far as audio is concerned, would be AAC. It's also the most compatible audio format. Then sampling frequency is also going to dictate or control the audio quality. And you're going to want to pump up the sampling frequency, in other words, the audio bitrate, for each stream. Again, choosing the encode mode of AAC and a high sampling frequency. So I've chose 64K and AAC for both the main and substream. Last but not least is the attribute settings. So your audio in type would be choosing a line in or microphone, depending on if you want to use the built in microphone or if you're utilizing an external microphone. So line in again would be an external microphone, either using our two way audio kit, an external microphone or our two way audio combo. And then the built in mic would just be the mic option. So if you have a two-way audio kit, again, you're going to want to use line in 
Now note, it may switch your encoding settings at the top, in which case you'll need to re-enable. Choose AAC, 64K, and then click Save. So now that should save my encoding settings, and it won't get rid of them when I change my audio in type. So if I had a two-way audio kit, again, I would choose Line In. You can enable or disable the noise filter depending on your performance. Again, you're going to want to trial and error your audio settings for your given scenario. And then you could even choose how much the algorithm does noise reduction if you have the noise filter enabled. Then last but not least, you can also adjust the microphone and speaker volume by using these toggles at the bottom. You can go from zero all the way up to 100 and then same for speaker volume, zero all the way up to 100. And this will allow you to adjust the audio settings for your two-way audio kit or microphone and speaker. Hopefully this video helps you access your camera directly and modify the audio settings within. Thank you for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.